Hey gal, thanks for popping on for the first official episode of Topics of Taboo. I've missed you so, so much. Oh my goodness. I missed you too. It's literally been so hard. Like for those of you who don't know, AJ and I actually don't live very far from each other. She's in Melbourne and I'm in a town called, I'm in a town called Geelong and we, we are in different lockdown restrictions. So she's actually in stage four and I'm in stage three and we just, Normally we'd probably hang out together and do this podcast one-on-one, -on -one, but obviously that's not an option at the moment. Um, how are you doing in stage four? Yeah, it's it's crazy, but I mean, it's just like kind of used to it now, just because like, yeah. just of um, lockdown been happening for most of 2020. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the new normal and it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's frustrating, but I mean, we've got to do it, so... Yeah, it's been such a crazy year, hey? Yeah. So, AJ and I, how long have we even known each other? Like, I don't even remember when we met. I feel like we've just been, like, we were super close, like, as soon as we met, and we just have stayed that way. Um, when did we meet? I think we met a fish, because we were, like, friends online for a bit, and then, like... Yeah, through YouTube and stuff. We met in the year of, like, 2017. Yeah, it was quite some time ago. Oh my god! Really? Because I feel yeah. like it was before VidCon. It was. Yeah, and like I. Yeah. That year, but you're going the following no. year. Correct. Yeah. Oh my god. So we've known each other for a while. We just haven't seen each other. I think the last time we saw each other was that event. Uh, LSE. LSE event. L LSE event. Yeah. Oh goodness me. Yeah, that was wow. crazy. And that was like. That was just before everything was about to go into lockdown. Like that was just... it, it was. Was that this year? This the beginning year. of the. That is crazy to me. Sorry. Actually, no, no. Um, we saw each other because you came and made a cameo in my short film, and that was like in February. Oh yes, no, I remember that. That was actually great. That was so much fun. Now, as you guys have probably seen by the title of today's episode, today's topic of taboo is all about being transgender. And who better to talk about their journey than this lovely lady? Um, listening to and seeing AJ go through her transition has been nothing short of inspiring. I could not be more proud of this gal, and I am so excited for all of you to hear her story too. Um, so yeah, I thought I would open up this podcast a little for you to ask her some questions and maybe even relate to her story a little bit as well. I thought we would just start by asking a little bit about your journey, like how it all began, how old you were and that sort of thing. And then I'll read out some questions that some of my followers have sent in and some advice that they would like on being transgender. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> okay, cool. So. Um, how old were you when you first started realizing that something wasn't aligning? When I think back to my childhood, it was very much from like the get-go. I could kind of grab a concept of yeah. how things are supposed to be. Like when like gender stereotypes and like you start to really feel that you're living in like a world that's created by other people as a child yeah. like that's mm -hmm. this this as soon as i realized that wait a second like boys do this boys do that like you're not supposed to do that that's for girls i was like something's mm -hmm. not right you know like it, a trans person literally has like the brain of the gender that they actually truly are so like that yeah. kind of conflict as a kid is really difficult to try to navigate mm -hmm. being yeah for sure what the hell like this isn't who I'm supposed to be but like it's being pushed on to you so I kind mm -hmm. of allowed myself to like embrace that part but in like yeah. other ways so I kind of didn't really think much of it and as yeah. a naive little kid I was like oh like I'm actually a girl so I'll just develop like any other girl when it comes to it I have to suck it up and have like short hair and um, yeah, wear yeah. boy clothes and all that kind of stuff like that. But luckily, like my parents were um, really accepting, and I was allowed to have like girl toys and like dress up here and there and just like, dress myself. Um, but it really like hit me when I was around like nine or ten. Really started to show that like it wasn't normal to do that. Yeah, yeah. Like when kids started like 
picking up on it and being like you're not supposed to wear nail polish um you're supposed to go yeah. hang out with the boys and you're supposed to do all those kind of like stereotypical mm -hmm. boys things i kind of was like yeah like there's this isn't right like i'm not no. developing as a girl right. and um yeah something just doesn't feel right but there was no yeah. visibility whatsoever so i could no label it there was nothing really there to be like oh that's me and like mm -hmm. now it's like there's so much more information out there it's just like so yeah. good for the younger generation to be like wow like that's my story yeah. and i relate to that that's right yeah yeah it was literally like nothing really i could be like wow that's that's how i feel so i just kept mm -hmm. it kind of like right at the back of my mind and just yeah. thought this is how my life is going to have to be until yeah. i was probably like 15 or 14 and it really yeah. hit me when um it was actually like one of my english teachers gave me like a little news article of um kim petrus who was like an amazing yeah. pop singer now she's thriving killing it um but yeah. she was on like news headlines for um being like the youngest trans girl to go and have gender reassignment surgery mm -hmm. so i was like what like yeah literally it was, like, a, it was a mind blowing like moment i was like yeah. that's a thing and like there's yeah. people who can actually transition like that's magic yeah. like what do you mean yeah. like i just yeah. that information was just crazy so i went home mm -hmm. i researched it and i was just like non-stop just really trying to educate myself with that that whole world and what really yeah. happens when you transition yeah. but once again like the internet like is not as like progressive as it For is sure. today like there was much more negative things about being trans online yeah. so it was like yeah. holy crap like what and, and what yeah i guess it would be so hard as well as a child like i think about even now like definitely um, coming into your teens there's a lot more that you can look at and realize and read about but like even going back to like um, gender reveal parties and stuff like growing up I suppose obviously I have never felt the way you do but like everything is so girls toys boys toys pink blue and there's so much meaning behind all of those things that I suppose you would have been so confused like as it was with how you were feeling but also all of those societal norms and stuff being pushed towards you it's great that your parents obviously let you have girls to girls toys i should say in inverted commas and things as well because that obviously made you feel better and allowed you to like explore how you're feeling more but like yeah as children like if you have a a boy as a ch as a child or a girl as a child you just society has shaped us to yeah dress them a certain way and give them certain toys so it would have been so difficult because at that age it, it is hard to educate yourself because you you wouldn't know any better if that's what else is around you with kids at school as well exactly um, yeah and like i feel like and like yeah like boys and girls toys like it's yep. that doesn't define someone's gender or like the all. way that you dress and like the yeah. choices of wanting to wear makeup and all that self-expression and I feel yeah. like as a child you like don't understand that until no. you see in society that's like those are those that's things not, those aren't gendered they're literally yeah. like plastic exactly cotton. like yeah it's you not, don't think of like you, mean you literally as no. a kid you gravitate you start playing with a boy's toy for example as a girl and then you're just like playing with it and then next yeah. minute you've got people telling you no like you don't play with that and it's like correct that's as a child changes your perception towards that thing if you link yeah. it to being bad then you're going mm -hmm. to view that thing as bad and you will like yeah. shove that to the side and not actually yeah. truly follow what mm -hmm. you wanted in the first place yeah and obviously like kids can't grasp that but i could just even imagine like i'm just picturing you or someone that is going through that as a young age at school and if you um like reached for a girl's toy I can just imagine like another boy coming over and being like what are you playing with a Barbie for like that sort of thing because that is what is ingrained to children through society and through parenting like parenting that isn't as progressive and things like that I can just imagine yeah how hard that would have been like oh. yeah it's it's crazy yeah. how those things are truly I know as a kid you just really don't think too yeah. deeply into things 
Not at all. And like, it always depends on like the environment and it takes one person to really alter that mindset yeah. that you have towards yeah. yourself and how you view mm -hmm. your own little bubble in the yeah. sense of like, as a kid you've got that really like vivid imagination and you really don't think anything Critics. more than just like that present time, you know? Yep. And the rest you go, the rest of your life trying to like understand that mentality mm -hmm. you have as a child like you want to try and get the essence back but life kind of yeah. teaches you to grow up and like yeah. remove yeah. whatever you felt when you're younger uh -huh. which For is sure. like yeah it's just i feel like that's just what we've done as a society and it's like it's sad yeah because it's so sad it's so sad like kids aren't born with hate and kids don't have any no. like sense of like like they're just going to accept anybody they're just doing yeah they, there's no right or wrong they just learn and they just go along that's so true yeah it's not until they get negative influences or positive influences or whatever that they start to associate certain things with certain words or certain actions or beings like yeah that's so true um my next question that i have here is what does it feel like to be transgender i think you sort of touched on that a little then um but I guess, what does it feel like for you now? Does it feel the same as it did before? Um, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I feel like something that is a miss... I feel like something that's like a, a known thing when it comes to being trans is the fact that like we transition. And yeah. the reason why we do transition is because that's a treatment for gender dysphoria. So yes. being trans is literally that feeling of gender dysphoria, which is the sense of feeling like out of place and discomfort within mm -hmm. the yes. um, sex that you were assigned at at birth. So yeah. um, if you're not trans and you're cisgender, which like is that you like identify with your born sex. Yes. And, um, yeah, and it's literally just feeling like something has gone wrong or there just wasn't, like... It just wasn't aligning. Yeah, it just wasn't yeah. the right, you know, like, you're you're there in your body, yeah. but you were just developing in the wrong way. And obviously, yeah. at different points, it will be more discomforting and mm -hmm. it will be traumatizing. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. But, like, it does get better, but, like, it doesn't go away. Like, it's a continuous struggle, no matter what point you are in your transition. Mm -hmm. I feel like people think that a trans person transitions and gets everything they want out of their transition mm. and is fully done, but... Correct, yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of people think, like, as soon as you transition, you are fine. And, like, it doesn't... It's even if... Like, it, I've heard you say this before, and it makes so much sense, and I feel exactly the same but like as soon as you transition you are still trans you're not just you, you don't you're not cisgendered like you're not you know like I feel like people think that and people are like oh yeah like they're all good now like they're a girl but like at the end of the day you're still trans and like people don't yeah and that's the thing and we should as, we as a society should acknowledge that because as trans yeah. people we are fully aware of the fact that yes. we are trans and because that is a label we, we didn't really choose like no one really chooses no. their label in the lgbtqi plus community but mm -hmm. the fact that like so many people without any empathy or like compassion towards yeah um trans people don't realize when they say that like oh but now you just you're a girl or like now you're transitioned so you stop calling yourself trans like just no one cares like, no. stop shoving it down people's throats it's like no yeah. because it's still a continuous struggle you know, yeah. like if someone yeah. goes and has like um, a surgery to fix something, like for example, if someone was blind and they had a surgery to try and make their yeah. sight better, yeah. but it doesn't fully like... like they It doesn't take away from the fact that they weren't, they didn't have issues with their sight beforehand. It's not like that didn't exactly. all exist, like it existed. And yes, you've transitioned, but it doesn't take away from your journey or what everything you've been through. Like, you're exactly. still... Exactly. Yeah. And your life doesn't no, go back that. to exactly how it was before. Like, yeah, you're still going to be, like, that person. And, like, that's yeah. the thing. Like, if I could choose to be cis, I would. Like, I wouldn't choose exactly. to be trans. 
um, in a million years, but that yeah. was the life that, like, I had to live. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and that will always be a part of it, like, no matter, you know, like, obviously, day to day, it's mostly going to be mm-hmm. just a struggle within the yeah. trans individual. You're not going to sit there, like, telling everybody, but everyone has their, their demons and everyone has their struggles that they need to deal with. It's yeah. the frustration comes from society and their mindset towards trans people Correct. you know like it's yeah. tiring when people think just being trans is like political and that that's like I a know. stance just being trans in general it's like oh yeah like i don't agree and agree with that or it's like a religious debate or it's like all these kind of things it's just like mm-hmm. the way that we are isn't up for debate or it's no, not up for really any discussion you know we're yeah. just asking for a bit of like empathy and sympathy a bit more like representation and we just don't want to be killed anymore that's like the full stop like exactly. you know i always get really annoyed when people that haven't been in your shoes or haven't experienced or felt exactly what you've felt feel like that they can put their two cents in they can't and like obviously the same thing goes for any any member of the lgbtqi plus community if anyone that hasn't experienced feelings or emotions or hasn't gone through what you've gone through, how on earth can they sit there and judge it and exactly. think that they can have an opinion? Like they can have their opinion, but they cannot act like it's not hard for you or act or like, yeah, speak about you. Like you're some sort of like different, like not human. Like what the heck? We're all human. You can't. Yeah. It does annoy me. I, yeah. I can't imagine how it feels. So someone here said, is bottom surgery a must? Is it okay for people to only want top surgery? I guess like it just it depends on like the trans individual like no bottom mm-hmm. surgery, gender reassignment surgery, gender confirmation surgery like all those terms like mean the same thing but yeah. um I feel like it's yeah always down to how that person views their body, yeah. how that person experiences gender dysphoria, because um, yeah. it hits a trans person like differently, and that's why mm-hmm. there needs to be different stories told and more visibility and representation. Because, um, yeah, like that isn't the solution or the treatment needed for yeah. um, some for trans everyone. people, and sometimes yeah. it's not an option, and sometimes it's expensive yeah. and. Um, Mm -hmm. there's no way that that person can also access it. So we need to also work as a society to make sure people feel safe and comfortable and okay with the fact of like, girls have different kind of bodies and boys have different kind of bodies and that's okay and we all experience different things. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, so Yeah. yeah, it just comes down to that person and it's really sad that when trans people don't have access to the surgeries that they need, um, because it's just one of those things that, like, it's not an option, you yeah. know? Like, they're truly needing those surgeries to live their full, like, potential. And yeah. that's another thing that I feel like people don't understand is that they don't get that, like, it's not an option. Like, you mm-hmm. know? Like, whenever people say that, oh, like, are you excited for your surgery? Like, oh, my God, you're going to get, like... A vagina like you should be excited yeah. and all this kind of stuff like that it's like yeah like it's obviously not, we're yeah. excited for the feeling afterwards but it's like yeah. why would we be excited for something that should have already been on our body correct <laughs> why would i be excited for something that like this is something i need this isn't something i want like it's not like you're getting fake boobs or like a nose job it's literally like i'm doing this so that i can feel the way i was meant to feel like my entire life it's not yeah. i'm doing this for fun like no not at all exactly. i get that yeah um this person here said are non-binary people trans i mean it's also that's also down to the individual there will be non-binary people that do identify with being trans um unless some they won't like yeah like that's why the lgbtqi plus community is so inclusive and accepting it's just like labels don't really matter to us like yeah um it can be tough to understand which one is you but like if you're part of the community you're yeah. part of the community you know as an ally yeah. or like as um yeah just whatever mm-hmm. you identify as you know yeah but like mm-hmm. if someone mm-hmm. is um non-binary it's mm-hmm. like 
being trans, t like, yes. means to have, to being non-binary can yeah. fall under that umbrella, being like, if you're yeah. socially transitioning, being if you yeah. are non-binary and you feel like you want to medically transition as well, because that can also yeah. be a thing, it's just yeah. always down to that individual yeah. and you can't sit there and tell someone how no. they are um this person said i want to try using they them pronouns but i'm super scared any suggestions um yeah i feel like if like the best way i can answer this is that like with my pronouns and with that whole yeah part of just like having to understand that people in your life will have to transition with those pronouns mm -hmm. it's just yes. like it's it's difficult but yeah like there will be a time when they will fully grasp it you know yeah it's scary and like you will have to like deal with that whole like misgendering yeah and just like yeah that not everyone's going to get it especially with they them pronouns there's like there's so much like debate and people will fight you yeah. on it and mm -hmm. um yeah like just know that like surround yourself as, with the community as much as possible yeah. um because that's where you're going to feel the most safe and included mm -hmm. um yeah. but as for like anybody else it's not like it's on them you know like it's got yeah. nothing to do with you you know who you are at the end of the day so yeah um if somebody doesn't want to respect that then they're just yeah. a terrible human and they're not worth like your time Literally. and energy um, yeah so yeah what were the toughest things you had to deal with when you were transitioning um the toughest things I probably had to deal with was just like the perceptions of others mm -hmm. um like the fear of not being passable for that day and in that moment yeah um, okay like that is something really scary for a trans person um yeah. because you literally go and start your day being like am i going to get abused am i going to get attacked like wow. it's yeah. like just a scary thought to like deal with and um and then especially like for me i'm very much someone that's just like like day to day i just want to blend <laughs> You know, yeah. so like at that period mm -hmm. of my life when I had like really short hair and like I was just trying my best to blend and I didn't want to really court like have much like attention or anything. I just wanted yeah. to live my life. It was just like one of those things that just like especially like with having anxiety, it was just like amplified, being super yeah. cautious. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also just the thought of just like knowing that I needed to have like um a vagina as well like to go and actually start that process you know yeah. like it's really like confronting and it just becomes uh, they don't make that like process easy and it needs to change but um yeah the fact of like just those things my transition yeah. like i found it the most difficult yeah it definitely would be how did your parents and siblings react to you coming out? I mean, yeah, like, my whole family had been accepting, like, I mean, there wasn't much of, I didn't, the thing is, I didn't really come out to them, I just literally yeah. started transitioning and um, did it on my own, so when they kind of, kind of noticed, they were just like, oh, so you're changing your name, you're like what do you want you know like they kind of just entered that conversation um yeah and we just discussed like what i wanted to do and like where i was leading and all this kind of stuff like that um yeah and yeah and luckily they were like accepting towards it um and yeah i just feel like i was really lucky in that like um aspect but, yeah. um yeah like there was some hiccups when it came to like older family members and not really like getting Correct, it yeah. um mm -hmm. which was a bit sad but um yeah you know like it's nothing that like i haven't really dealt with but like you know the same kind yeah. of perceptions or yeah. discussions that's like i'm kind of like 
thankful that like I've grown that thick skin from doing like social media and being Definitely. so public um, yeah. because like you hear every single thing and it's just like yeah it's like you so really think you can hurt like... me like yeah I've already heard that 10 times <laughs> yeah well that leads into my next question perfectly this person said um, what's the most annoying or hurtful question you've ever received um I feel like we've got one that still gets me today and every single time I see it I will still kind of be like triggered by it and like pull me back is just the fact of like people pointing out like things in like my appearance or just being mm. like you know most of the times they're just trolls but being people being like like for example um and I mean this is just gonna happen when like you grow on like like in general and you're thriving and you're living your best life but when yeah. you just pick out little things being like oh like yeah I can still tell that like she's a man like you can you can still see it and it's like <sighs> you know like it's just like wow like thank you like it's just those ones will always I can never it's just so ignorant yeah like I can never really yeah. fight those like yeah come at me at any other kind of kind of thing but it's like you, you talk on my appearance it's like it's gonna hurt you know and I feel like yeah. that's with anybody because it's mm -hmm. just like it's just a reminder like no matter what I do or no matter what you know like there's like I've never really felt like someone that like needed to have like um facial feminization surgery because I've always just been no. comfortable with my face and yeah. Um, yeah. I've been pretty lucky with having an already feminine face yeah but yeah. like when those things pop up like my dysphoria is just like maybe you do need to go and get something done like maybe you need no, to feminize no. something here or like yeah. you know but it's like yeah taking your time to breathe and being like oh like yeah. actually no it's just they're being like assholes um, yeah, yeah. It still gets you off guard, and it's just like it's definitely and everything. And even when people yeah. pick up on like my voice as well, and they're just like, yeah, like it's the man voice for me, and it's like, thank you, like. <laughs> and like, Ooh. and I, like, I already know that there's like, you know, like voices are different, and the cisgender like women yeah. who have deep voices too, and it's just like I just have, because I'm trans, it's like you're gonna yeah. point it out, you know, like it's literally, like, it's not, it's nothing, like, and that's the only reason they're picking that out, um, because they want to hurt you, like they f want to find a way to hurt you. That's what they're doing with their lives because they have nothing better to do. But I once got told by someone in high school that my defining feature to them was that I had a deep voice, and obviously that didn't affect me negatively I was just like oh well I never thought I did and I think I do for a relative but like it's interesting that yeah that's all they can attack you on because you're literally physically perfect and everyone else would feel the same and I don't care what you say you're literally an angel but yeah being obviously trans like that is what would hurt you the most because that is just something that you have struggled with and probably still do occasionally and that's what they attack rather than yeah ugh yuck I literally hate trolls they are ugh, the worst what would you want to say to your younger self love you both I would like to say that just be patient and yeah. just to know that things don't seem like they're going to get better but they do and to not be so hard on yeah. yourself um, mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, I honestly was so, I feel like you're just the cruelest person to yourself and the biggest bully to yourself sometimes, especially when you're younger and it's just like, yeah. you just don't think you're capable of anything and yeah. yeah, just like, yeah, I would remind myself that like, you're gonna be okay, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, just that kind of sense of things will be better I mean yeah. you will be better um, mentally mm -hmm. like and happier and all that kind of stuff like that it's just like yeah it's not worth the drama you feel in that moment the pain you feel in that moment it's not worth yeah. it you know yeah. like feel it cry about it but don't let it dwell onto like your future and think it's gonna be a part of you for the rest of your life because it's not yeah you know yeah. that's really good advice 
Um, yeah, and a hundred percent with what you said, like we're a hundred percent our own worst critic. And that goes for anything in life. Like when you think you look bad that day or you're having like an ugly day or you're feeling terrible about yourself, someone else is always going to see you better than you see yourself. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, gal. Well, the last question is, if you could spread an LGBTQ plus message to the world, what would it be? That's big. big. That is big. <laughs> um, I feel like the world definitely needs to know and understand and grasp the fact that like we didn't choose to be this way um yeah. and we're not trying to shove it down anybody's throats mm-hmm. we are honestly just trying to be represented and feeling like we're a part of something just like yeah. straight cis people have been doing for centuries um mm-hmm. we just feel like we want to be included in that and it's not that like difficult to include us and give us a bit of positive and like better representation it's not too much to mm-hmm. ask for you know like yeah we just want to be equal you yeah know? and yeah. we're not trying to push nothing onto anybody the only one that's yeah. trying to push things is the people that are so negative yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, which makes no sense. Yeah, um, like but... <laughs> they want to push hatred towards onto us and yeah. have us actually physically hurt instead of mm-hmm. just like, you know, letting us all thrive and live together in the same rock. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I get that. That's That makes total sense. That's actually a perfect message and I want everyone to live by that. I wish they would. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so, so much, Gal, for coming on the first official episode of Topics of Taboo. You've been an absolute joy to interview and catch up with. Um, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I did. Thank you for having me. Like, this, it's always a pleasure being with you and just chatting. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to see the rest of these podcasts as well. It should be fun. Thanks so much, Queen. And lastly, is there anything that you would like to say to anyone listening before we finish this little episode? Um, I guess we're just like living on this huge rock. So like we're here to really do whatever the frick we want. So, you know, live your best life. Like, don't take it too seriously. That's that. I love that. I love that. All right. Thanks so much, gal. I love you and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Bye.